Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Sayyidi, I was hoping you could clarify the balance between humbleness and confidence. Since in tariqah we are advised to always be humble, how would one struggle? How how would one who struggles with anxiety balance humility with positive confidence? This way of humility is a way of controlling the self. I think we've talked before about not bringing oneself down but to truly love yourself before you can expect other people to respect you and to love you, you have to love yourself. And a part of that loving of the self and the understanding of the self and taking this way of marifa, taking this way of realities, it's a whole package. So it doesn't work just in pieces. To learn how to make the noble connection, how to make the rabita, how to make the meditation, how to connect to this energy, how to connect to the shaykhs so that we feel that connection, that energy learning how to keep the energy, how to keep all of the wudu, how to keep the practices because this is all based on energy. So when energies are coming to insan they cause the anxiety, they cause depressions, they cause many different realities. When somebody is not achieving what their soul wants them to achieve we call depression. Because the soul has its coordinates and the body is doing something different. We talked uh, today that an external scholar was talking about Sayyidina Ibrahim and he left Sitna Hagar in the desert and went and left her to herself and therefore he was saying that, you know, in life you leave and let the people take care of themselves and they're responsible, Allah will be responsible. But the real reality for our everyday life is that Sayyidina Hagar represents the soul and the body and Sayyidina Ibrahim represents the physicality of submission. That his coordinates is to submit and his body to submit and to follow the commands that Allah is putting upon his disciplines of his physicality and as a result the soul has confidence in what the body is doing and the soul begins to learn to distance from the body. And that's the concept of leaving the soul in the desert. It doesn't need to continuously communicate with the body and it builds its own connection. And the real struggle is with the soul and not the body. So people think they're putting their body on this path, it's really just trying to discipline the body but the real testing is coming from your light and from malakut. That you're going to be struggling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you seventh time means the seventh spring of reality that Allah opens Fitratul Islam that your nature and reality begins to open. You accepted the coordinates of your body so your body is doing its daily struggle and your soul is, is at peace with what Allah has ordered for it. So there's not the turbulence of the in and out, the yin and yang. When the soul and body are not agreeing and not, not accepting each other is tremendous turbulence in that person. Subduing that turbulence is then the practices that the body is doing, the body's got its path and now the soul is understanding the energies, the, the realities and the practices. One of the initial parts of the soul is depression and anxiety. Once you start to do your practices and discipline the body, say, I'm coming to tariq, I want to get to know Allah I want to love Sayyidina Muhammad that's a body movement. As soon as the body's coming in, 
then the zikrs and practices the soul begins to now push to the body that we have things to be doing. We promised Allah many things, we're not reaching to that so it begins to send its asharat out to the body. And those isharats are signals and guidances that are coming is teaching the body through depression. So depression is a sign from the body that you're not doing what Allah had ordered you to do. You're falling short, you're lazy, you're, you're sitting down, you're, you're not trying to really achieve what you were supposed to achieve, the maximum of what you could achieve or maybe you're just only trying to conquer the earth and nothing from your prayers and, and what your soul knows that you're about to meet Allah and you're not doing anything for it. So then it puts on an energy what we call depression like a weight that can't do anything anymore because the soul is blocking. Anxiety same, anxiety it's sending another signal that is anxious, we have a ticket, we have a ticket and, and, and you're not ready, you're not ready, you're not packed, you're not packed. So again these are signs from the world of light. So Mawlana Shaykh's prescription for that was, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, Alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. To keep praising upon Allah hundred times a day, Alhamdulillah, that all praise be to Allah shukran lillah that I'm thankful Ya Rabbi for what you have given and destined for me means their spiritual practices have to increase. When the spiritual practices increase and the energy comes onto the soul, it begins to feel a relief like it's seeing now. It sees there's a hope and it's now being pointed in the correct direction. As a result of that the anxiety begins to diminish and this is not related to any chemical imbalance. Anything from a chemical imbalance and medical difficulty you have to always seek medical help. There can be many different reasons for that. This is if all the variables are okay and this is not about medical help, I just feel anxious. Because you're supposed to be achieving through your soul not through your body. Many people think, oh I'm, I'm, I'm feeling anxious because I should be you know doing work and getting projects and doing all sorts of busy things at work and that's incorrect. You're not really reading the signal correctly and that can even be induced by coffee, caffeine and powders for children. They have now weightlifting powders that are all caffeine, drinking powders all caffeine and create them now to become manic where they're overly active and they don't know what to do for work and for career and they start to become anxious. And the real Real, real reality of anxiety is their soul. They should be meditating and praying and making their connection with their soul. When you make the connection with your soul a light illuminates within the heart. You'll meditate and use that light to begin to see the hope that, oh Allah has a plan for me. It can't come faster and it doesn't go any slower. It'll come exactly the way Allah wants it. Every time Allah gives a time it's He wants something to be achieved. That for many this can be a great blessing for the world to slow down. You don't have to hustle and bustle. We said many times there's no more khalwa. Why? Because everybody was wor working so hard to pay their rent, who could go into isolation? Allah made the whole world to go into isolation. Lucky are those whom capitalize on that reality that there's a God, government is sending some money. They have the ability to sit, find some peace, make your connection. When Allah turns the signal back up and make everything busy then that time was lost and won't be regained. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding on how to make the spiritual connection and how to, to build the self. When you build yourself then you take a path of humility and that's why all the steps in tariqah come and begin to teach. Don't show yourself, don't talk, take a path of silence. Those build humility because as you're getting energies and if you start to have experiences, last thing you want to do is give the experiences to your ego where it starts to tell people, oh yeah see with a group of people I saw this, I saw that, I felt this, I felt that, become all egoistic. Now you ruined whatever you experienced and now you can see how those experiences 
they were given to the ego and nafsani. So humility was to teach myself, don't talk, don't say about it, just keep it to myself, be humble, serve people, make other people to be happy, live a life of service. So humble is to you know do the characteristics to be of service. It's not that to destroy yourself and insult yourself, inshaAllah. Sayyid, this is the second time I'm emailing and it's because I've noticed I'm becoming more able to direct my attention to my own defects. Whereas before this I was blaming my family members for difficult times, unpleasant conversations and chaos in the home. I'm completely unfamiliar with muraqaba but would like to begin so that these characteristics of extreme perfectionism, hyperreactiveness, jealousy, immense attachment, desi desire for attention and argumentativeness can become more clear. I'm keeping my wudu but still finding many dry patches where I feel my energy levels are very, very low and where mild depression takes over and I begin fearing that another clash with family members is imminent. If muraqaba requires a personal assessment, I'm very open to breathing exercises and would be happy to take any advice you have to give. InshaAllah, there's an ocean of realities that once you get to know yourself, you'll know your Lord. So this is from hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad who knows himself will know his Lord. So this path is based on knowing the self. How and why? If I'm getting angry, if I have a situation in which relatives are disturbing me, Allah wants something from that. So that becomes your testing ground. How am I going to keep patient in the face of this difficulty? I'm going to keep my wudu, I'm going to keep my, my meditation and, and connection and learn how to build the energy. I can't give what I don't have so I have to build my energy. This energy comes as a way to hold down the wildness. So you have to think your nafs is like a wild horse. Have you ever seen there's no one, no way to put a saddle on a wild horse? It will kill you and kick you. The nafs is very wild, especially now for people that don't want any type of comment to come. Someone asked about hijab and asked some questions and two answers they didn't like and then started beginning cursing us in the emails because the nafs doesn't want anyone to tell it anything. So when my wild horse has to be tamed and how do you tame the wild horse? You put a sack on it with 100 pounds and then this horse just kicking and kicking to get the sack off until it exhausts itself. And the sack is the disciplines, the teachings, the meditation, the energy. When you meditate and ask, Ya Rabbi I'm stroping from this busy world. In the middle of the night, I wake in the middle of the night while others are sleeping, I wash, sit and fill me with energy Ya Rabbi, send an energy, a light into my heart. Let me to be with my shaykhs and my guides and to see them in the eye of my heart in, in my presence that they're in front of me and then dress me from what Allah has dressed upon you, then their fires, their lights begin to come into the heart. That's a power. That power begins to come, begins to come, begins to come, what? It become like a sack of bricks upon your heart, upon your nafs. That's what's taming is this energy that coming, this energy that coming, the zikrs that's coming, then the awrad on how to make the daily connection. You don't leave it for even one day, if you leave the wazifa for one day you go into 40 days of being dark. So they never left it. It's a way to be connected like the internet. They do the wazifa every day, they make their connection and at night when they can after the Salat al Isha and everyone's asleep, Ya Rabbi dress me from your oceans of power, listen to the salawats, see yourself in Medina, make a beautific vision in, in the eye of your heart and just say, Ya Rabbi let me to be dressed by this beautific salawat, this nut sharif that I like. Whatever is it that you love. Visualize yourself with Prophet in Medina and that, Ya Rabbi let me to be dressed by it, blessed by it slowly, slowly. This energy comes, dresses the heart, that's what begins to push upon the nafs and burns the nafs. That's why when you listen to these zikrs, watch these associations, these are a fire against the nafs. And people get agitated, as soon as the event is over quickly go put sweets into your mouth. 
give your nafs, you know like what you give to the wild horse, you give it a cube of sugar. You don't give it a carrot, it doesn't want that at that time, it wants something sweet. So you give something sweet so that at the end of the zikr everyone can be calm and the nafs is, okay I'm good. Have you seen the commercial for the, this, it's not angry, it's not hungry, where they come? Hangry. Hangry. <laughs> yeah, the nafs have been on fire with these zikrs and you just want to keep letting it go, it'll attack you all the way home or all the way after you cut off your, your association. So quickly you put sweets in your mouth so that it's, it's calmed and everything become more serene. But these are the fires against the nafs and these are the practices. And then when you want to control your mouth you put a lollipop. We said before a stone, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq as Salaam, the master of the truthful servant Siddiq al-Mutlaq used to put a stone in the mouth as a teaching. And for us because we may choke on the stone, put a lollipop and then put it in your mouth as soon as you enter into your home where these relatives are and that's the sign for you, don't talk. That you're taking a path of no talking and keeping silent. So as much as you struggle with this fire and don't let it to release, Allah gives you control over it. Some people say, no I can just get angry as all I want and oh it doesn't matter that's you know the normal course of life. But you have to understand any fire you release it actually became harder for you to ever obtain the goal that you were trying to reach. If you don't grab the fire slowly, slowly keep controlling it, you're actually letting it to grow which is the reverse of the tariqah. It's okay, it's okay and before you know it your explosive nature is always exploding. And that's not the tariqah comes to teach that, no put the fire out. Each time you see it come put it out, put it out, put it out until Allah give you a strength over that so that you never blow up like that. Unless there's a cause from Allah's side, the something that angers the servant that angered Allah inshaAllah. Sayyidi, what is the reality behind eating sacrificed meat which is carrying our sins? Hmm? Is that during the qurbani? Yeah, it's not the meat that carries the sins, it's the sacrifice, the act of sacrifice. Allah is not the blood and the meat that meet and, and reaches to the Divine. But it's the sacrifice that the creature's making. It's the money that you're putting into it, you making a sacrifice is a zaki, it's a cleansing. And that the creature is carrying the burden in the world of energy. That the flowing of blood doesn't change anything otherwise that would be horrific. But the energy that the creature is going to carry because this is energy, this is nothing physical. That the energy of insan and there should be of a positive charge. The negative because the equation always has to be equal, it has to be 10-10 for example, 10 positive, 10 negative. If you're trying to get rid of 10 negative, where is it going to go? So then the qurban is the concept with the qurban will take that negative charge in its death. It will take that charge and give you the positive. Because of the good hasanat of you spending the money, you're going to now go feed people. The barakah of what you've done has those 10 values coming into you. So now your equation is you gave out the 10 negative and Allah gave you 10 positive. So that you became excess positive, the creature took the negative energy and as a result Allah gave that creature a miraj. It elevated its status of its existence and its life and its force. And that creature was granted a miraj for the sake of being of a khitmat to Bani Adam. And all of nature and everything around us is trying to achieve that reality, to be of service to Allah So they show us, if you really are a servant of Allah and many creatures have talked to awliyaullah and would tell them, that if you are such a big servant of Allah then you should learn from us how we serve. Look how we give ourselves so freely to Allah We said many times you burn the wood and the beautiful bukhur comes. So it's a, an example in our lives to live a life of service like the qurban. 
that be a, be a qurban for people, sacrifice yourself for people, be a servant for the people. Serve the poor, serve the needy, serve the, the people who don't understand the reality, be of service to them and be a good qurban in which you sacrifice your bad character. Don't answer back, don't insult, don't degrade people. And that's the, the example that the qurban is teaching us, look I didn't bite you when you came to give a sacrifice to me, I didn't attack you and then make you sacrifice like a horrific event for you. So the, the creature's even teaching us, you want to serve Allah then go give from what Allah has given to you and give it with the best of character. Have you seen these crazy people in the park in the UK? They go to a park in the UK and they start cursing and screaming and debating and fighting and cursing the Christian guy, Christian guy cursing them and Allah said, don't talk harshly to anyone about their religion lest they start speaking harshly about Allah Says in Qur'an, don't do that. So who told people to do things like that? You insult somebody's faith and they built their whole life on that faith, you, ex you insult everything they believe in, of course they turn around and start to insult and that was your fault that that happened and Allah holds you to account that why you did like that? Now he's sitting and, and cursing the Divinely Presence and this was your, your in, in desired intention? So it means even in the Qur'an is teaching us good character, serve this Bani Adam, be a servant to the people and the best of service is of good character, good politeness. When somebody insults just stay quiet, when somebody's rude stay quiet. That's why we don't argue with people on comments, we just delete and ban them. You know people are like, oh you know, what happens? You got banned. If you're going to make a belligerent comment we're not going to have a debate. We just ban the person because we don't argue. If they're expecting you know you're going to go back and forth and it's like you know school with the professor you're going to you know throw everything out there but no, no, tariqah is that no agitation in the heart. When somebody's clearly like that just off the page and we'll go back to sleep peacefully inshaAllah. And oh one important thing that keeps coming on, on all these questions, at least 90% of all the emails are coming in is, Shaykh is black magic, black magic is on me Shaykh. So this, this person who's called black magic is so immensely powerful that he causes everybody's families to break up, he causes everybody's business to collapse, he causes every type of bad characteristic and he became the default onto everything. That's not correct. You know the capture all email that anything that uh, is of anything goes to this specific character. So <laughs> if you're not a good businessman it must be black magic that made my business go down. No, no it's probably just you're not a good businessman. You know, Shaykh my kids don't listen to me it must be black magic. There's not a child on this earth that listens to their parent. So this, this is not the reality of life, I don't know what you were expecting. Allah wanted your children not to listen to you, to have and see what your character was like. How are you going to go into the cage of a lion and you thought the lion was going to come and to, to lick your hand like he was a cat? No, see how are you going to <laughs> deal, deal because they're small, they're like little kitty cats. As they're growing bigger they're like lions and you, <laughs> you, enter, you enter into the, 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 the cage then all the saying is a training. You have to have patience, you have to be calm, you have to have ability to communicate with them, teach them how to communicate. It's not that they submit to you and everything is, is, is going to be easy, Allah saying, you don't even submit to me, you think your kid submits to you? Everyone's expecting a hundred emails a day, yeah, make my kids to be good, make a du'a that they listen. If, if there was such a du'a Allah would have applied it to you first. And you would have been the perfect servant, we would have all been perfect servants and then our children would have been listening too. But it's a reflective life. You'll see your exact relationship with your Lord with all your children. The more kids you have the more of your characteristics you'll see in each one. You'll see your talking one, your quiet one, your nosy one, your aggressive one. All your characteristics they're all your fruits. When you have lots of fruits you see all your defects, each one carries one of your fruits. So when you say, oh you're really aggressive, well yeah where did it come from? 
this child's aggression, where did it come from? It's, the, it's your fruit. So Allah wants you to see, so you're not seeing, I show you my signs upon the horizon and within yourself. So the people of Tafakkur they understood that half your deen is, is having a family. And as soon as you have a family you begin to see yourself, oh this, this kid is like this from me, this one is my characteristic of that. And then they feel remorseful that, Ya Rabbi how this, this characteristic bothers me so much, I might have bothered you so much with this characteristic. Please forgive me, please forgive me, forgive this bad characteristic in me. And I saw myself in all of their characteristics and I saw how much I bothered Allah with these characteristics. So there's a lot to learn from our lives, not to always just try to change it and make it to go away but to live a life of reflection that what are you seeing when you're looking at them in our lives. And we should be seeing these characteristics and we should be seeing ourselves in them, inshaAllah. So there's no mystical guy named Black Magic that makes everything bad. It's just the life that we live and the challenges we have. If you focus on your Lord, focus on your relationship, focus on your salawats, there's no power greater than Allah So how could anyone possibly think that they're going to be defeated? As much as you run towards Allah love of Sayyidina Muhammad stop posting your face everywhere, stop posting pictures of your children everywhere, seal all of these things then of course Allah's might and majesty begin to dress you and push away every type of difficulty inshaAllah. As alaykum and Eid Mubarak Sayyidi. Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak. I have difficulty Eid understanding nafs and companion jinn, is there a difference and which one gets stronger? Allah described that we've given to everyone a shaitan who accompanies him. Your nafs is the bad characteristics, your hawa is your desire, so you have nafs, the, the, the naughty being inside yourself little bit wild of a horse, your dunya, your desire to live upon this for all of eternity, your hawa, your desires of comfort and pleasure and, and self-gratification and shaitan. So you're split into four. Our life is split into these four enemies. Nafs and shaitan become shariq. So when we say La Shariq there is no partnership with Allah you never got close to being a partner with Allah it's not even anything possible. But what you did do is you allowed your nafs to become partner with shaitan and the two of them became so powerful that they increased your dunya and they overtook your hawa and they've taken over your entire being. So when the nafs and shaitan become partners and friends you find your hawa is growing, oh your desires, oh you want to eat and do and touch and do everything. And as a result your dunya is going crazy, that you don't want to do anything to do with akhirah, you're just out trying to conquer the world and entertain yourself for all of eternity. So awliya come and teach that, no, no the soul has to be brought into control, that the dunya has to be brought down. Control your eyes, control what you want, take a path of spirituality, look to your heart, don't look to the outside world for gratification, look to your heart and what Allah was sent. Then your hawa, put difficulty upon yourself. When we were training in our younger years before arthritis and difficulty in our legs, we were always sitting in difficult positions to cause discomfort into the body. We don't meditate in comfort. Where you make it so comfortable and five seconds you're sleeping in it. We were sitting in a position that caused pain. After about 20 minutes you're like numb, you'd have to go into sujood just so the blood would flow back into your feet. So you create a condition of difficulty, Prophet would sleep on bamboo with marks of bamboo on his face. And the companions would cry and say, we will give you anything we have, why we put you in this condition like this? He said, so that I can pray fajr. So that I'm not heedless and go into a deep state of sleep which Prophet is beyond that reality but to teach us. You want to fight your hawa and your desires, you come to be hard against yourself. 
and then the fight against the nafs and the zikr and the practices. Now all of that is a fight against shaitan and understanding these teachings of how shaitan is operating and trying to fool us, inshaAllah. But it's good, I think we have enough. People are probably hungry, they want to, to break, inshaAllah. Keep uh, communication, keep your support coming and uh, get involved with uh, the projects, get involved with Facebook, get involved with YouTube, the app, the nurmuhammad.com, the website has a link to the app, make sure that everyone has the app and that watch the shows in the UK and throughout Canada and in, on the internet and YouTube inshaAllah Allah dress you, bless you, Eid Mubarak to everyone. And that hope to see everybody tomorrow night inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.